Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sophie and I run Agnes London. If you are new here, I upload videos every week about sewing, sustainable living, DIY, that kind of thing. And in today's video, I am gonna be making a worker's jacket. So I have wanted one of these ever since last summer. So today I'm gonna to be following a pattern. I have got this one from Merchant and Mills. As you can see there, it is their Otterline pattern and it is a boxy workwear jacket. Yeah, so that has the pattern in it. This is actually the first time I've followed a pattern from a kit like this. Normally I make patterns myself, but I don't have any pattern paper at the moment. So yeah, I brought this one online. It says the skill level is experienced, but hopefully it will give you an idea of the kind of processes that go into making an item of clothing like this. For the fabric, I have got this natural denim. I brought this last year. It was in an offcuts bin in Cloth House in Soho. And in the kit with the pattern, it comes these really useful instructions. So let's get into the video and let's get started making this jacket. First of all, I'm going to iron as much of the fabric as I can as it has been sitting scrunched up in a drawer. Okay, so here I have the pattern that I'm going to be following. Ordinarily, I would trace this off so I don't have to cut out this, but unfortunately right now I don't have any pattern cutting paper, so I'm going to cut it out. And as you can see, each piece has got sizes 6 to 18. I think I'm going to cut out size 14 because I want to be able to wear it in spring and in autumn with layers underneath it. So what do we have here? We've got a front piece. So where a pattern says cut one pair, that means cut two pieces. And then we've got a fold line on it. So that bit's going to be folded. Um, if you wanted to make it longer, they've left space where you can lengthen or shorten it. There's the pocket positioning there, the button positioning, and then these are called notches. So on each pattern piece, you want to make sure that the notches match up. And then I can show you on this piece as well. Here we have something called a grain line. The grain line runs parallel to the salvage, which is not the cut edge, it's the like finished edge of the fabric. Okay, so I've got fabric scissors and paper scissors. I'm gonna use my paper scissors for anything with the paper and then fabric scissors for the fabric, obviously. Now you don't ever want to use fabric scissors on paper because you want them to stay as sharp as possible and you don't want to blunt them by cutting out paper. Okay, so that is all my pattern pieces cut out. I've got the two pieces for the sleeve here and I've gone for the version with the vent at the moment. So those two pieces will go together like so. And you can see there, there's a notch on each piece. And that means that when I'm sewing, those two notches need to line up for that seam. So those are the sleeve pieces, we've got the back yoke, the back of the jacket, got the collar, the back, that is where the yoke will attach to it. Got two pockets, which I think are optional, but I might just do both of them. And then the front piece. So now I need to lay my fabric out and pin the pattern pieces to them and then cut them out. Okay, so here I have my fabric. It's folded in half and the salvage, which is this edge, is together. And then I've got the side that I want to be on the outside is up, right side is up. And then here I have my folded edge. So I'm gonna start off by laying my pattern pieces out. So here we have the back piece and it says cut one on the fold. And then here it has place on fold, centre back. So I know that this is going to be one piece and I need to pin it and cut it so that edge lines up with the fold. So I'm going to lay my pieces out before pinning them to check that I have enough fabric and that it all fits on. I'm going to do all the pieces that are on the fold first. Now I'm going to pin everything down. Thank you. 
as I'm cutting out my pattern pieces, they have these marks here, which are notches. So I want to mark these onto my pieces. So I'm just gonna do a little cut, literally like a few millimeters into the piece, just like that, just to notch the piece of fabric. And these notches are really useful when it comes to sewing the garment together. So it's important to mark all the notches on. Now I've cut out the pattern pieces, I want to get as much information off them onto the fabric as possible. Where there are notches, I want to make sure that they're all marked. And here, where it's got the pocket placements, I'm going to put a mark on the fabric and also the bottom positions. So I have this tool, which is a clicker's all, and I'm just going to push it through and make a small hole in the fabric where I need to sew on the pockets. And I'm going to put one in for the button positions as well. So this should just be visible enough that I can see to sew it on. And then the hole should be covered up by the pocket or the button when I put it on. And now normally you'd use a notcher for this to mark the notches. But as I don't have a notcher, a pair of scissors is fine. I just want to make sure that I'm not cutting too far in to the seam allowance that there'll be a hole. I'm going to start off with the pockets. And on the pattern, I can see that there is a fold line mark and I've marked the notches on the fold line and I'm just going to press both those fold lines down. And then I'm going to press that. And I'll go to the machine and I will top stitch that. Okay, so I'm going to use matching colour thread and then some parts I'm going to do in a decorative stitch. I'm going to stitch top stitch along the edge. There we go, so you won't even really be able to see it from the outside. Okay, so the pockets are all done and now I need to go back to the iron and I need to press all the edges in. next step is to sew the pockets on to the front of the jacket. It's really hard to see where the all left a mark so I'm going to just do it again in pencil which won't really show up that much on this fabric. That was one there, that was one there and then I'm marking one front pocket on the left side as well. Let's do the left side first and get it over and done with so that's got the most pockets on it. Okay, let's pin that in place. Hopefully pin that straight. And then let's pin the bigger pocket on the bottom. There is one pocket done. Actually, that looks quite neat. So as you can see, I've done a double row of stitching and I just did that as like one continuous row all the way around. So now that's that little one done. And I'm feeling a bit more confident. Let's move on to doing the big one. There we are, there's one side done with both pockets. Now I'm gonna do the right side. Okay, so the next few steps require quite a lot of pressing. I think I cut out the pattern pieces for the vents at the back, so we're going to have to go with that one. So yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and press the vents and press the front facings, like these few steps, but I'll show you what I'm doing as I'm going along. So here we have the two front pieces that I have just sewn the pockets onto. They've got notches 
where I left them. So I'm going to fold back the facing. Yeah. I'm going to press that back like that. And then that other notch is where I trim it to. And then pressing the vent in and then this up. I'm just going to press that like that. So that one is all pressed. That is the vent at the side. That's the front. Let's do the back as well. Fold the facing onto the front side and then I'm going to stitch up to that notch there. And I'm going to trim off that seam allowance to make it less bulky when I turn it inside out, which gives us an edge like that. And then I'm going to stitch in at the bottom as well. So those, those front edges done. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Okay, and now I'm going to top stitch this piece. Okay, I'm just going to go and press that like that, but I'm not going to move my camera again. So you're going to stay there. Okay, it is a lot easier to make clothing when you're not trying to film it. So I have pressed one centimeter back on the facing. So this is the wrong side. And as you can see, it is folded over. And now I'm gonna to top stitch that. Okay, so just one row of top stitching. And that is nice and neatly top stitched back. So that's what it looks like from the outside. Okay, that's the other side done. So next step is to attach the back at the sides. So I'm placing right sides together, I'm matching up the notches and I'm gonna pin by the notches. So I know that that's just where I'm sewing down to. And then I'm gonna sew with a one and a half centimeter seam allowance. So that's one and that's one and a half. Okay, so events really confuse me. They always have, but basically what I've done, here is my vent, stitched all the way down to there. So all the way down here to there. And I'm gonna snip a diagonal line across there, which will allow me to turn it back one centimetre and turn it back a centimetre there, and then turn it over and top stitch it down. Now I don't normally back tack when I'm doing Top stitching, it's just because it's so hard to see on this one that I don't think it will matter. Okay, so that's the front vent top stitched back. Now I need to do the same with the back vent, which I think that should sit into for that one like that. Okay, so now I know what I'm doing on that side, the other side will be much quicker. That's the vent done on that side. All right, so another front vent done, and now I'm just gonna do the back one. And this side also. So there's the back vent now. I need to stitch down there. So I'm going to top stitch those seams to one to the front. I'm going to top stitch them.
You can tell it's the end of the day because I just forgot to hit record. Hey, so it is six o'clock on the first day of filming. I started filming at 11 a.m. this morning and I'm just gonna stop filming now. And I just wanted to check in and show you how the jacket is going and just have a quick chat. So the point of this video is not, let me show you how to make this jacket and you can follow along and do it with me because obviously you could just buy this great kit which has the instructions in and it has the pattern pieces. The point of the video is more to show that making your own clothes is totally doable. It's a really rewarding process but it's not quick and it's not easy and it's not always the cheapest option but fashion shouldn't be. Fashion shouldn't be fast and it shouldn't be cheap. We should really appreciate the clothes that we wear. It is so rewarding to have something that you have made and you have put time into and even if you make a mistake it gives it character and you're like oh yeah that's that time that I accidentally did this or I don't know it, it just it just adds to the story of the piece but anyway I'm gonna wrap up filming for the day my camera battery has died twice and my memory card keeps filling up so that is how long a process this is my camera battery died while I was halfway through doing things so i just finished the vents at the bottom and then i did the top stitching two layers of top stitching on these side seams we've got the pockets on the front and i also stitched up the hem as well so it's been stitched so a centimeter has been folded in so those edges are finished so yeah those are the couple of things that i've done off camera and then i've got my vents either side so that is what stage it is at after one day of making i'm really not showing you this very well but i can't put it on because it doesn't have any shoulder seams attached at the moment but this will be the front yeah i don't know why i'm showing you that it literally doesn't help so I have been editing the footage I got from the jacket and I decided that I'm going to have to split it into a two-parter as I've got so much footage that it's about to turn into a feature-length film. So I hope you've enjoyed watching the jacket's progress so far and I hope it's given you an idea of some of the processes that goes into making a garment. This is actually one of the most simple jackets I've ever made because there's no fusing or anything like that. So join me next week when I will be finishing off the jacket it and you can see how the jacket has come together um, I didn't really want to have to split it into two parts but it is being so long and this is now day three of me making the jacket make sure you subscribe to my channel as I upload new videos every week on sewing upcycling sustainable living and give this video a like if you enjoyed it so far give me a comment to let me know what you think have you made a jacket like this before I already am thinking about what other colours I want to make it in so yeah go ahead and follow me on Instagram as I'll be posting more about making the jacket over there and I will see you next week with the rest of the jacket. Thank you so much if you got this far into the video.